gave me arms a little rest. Gave me arms a little rest and come on for you guys. Morning supporters. Good morning, my realist family. See how many of you are up and out and at them at this time of day. Let's see where my tribe really is. You're all in bed, aren't you? <laughs> all my true tribe are in bed. Where you belong. Where you should be. No, you shouldn't be. Because it's five to eight now. So you all should be up. Good morning, Laura Bradshaw. Morning, morning, morning. We're doing the second half of the walk now. I'm literally halfway now. So we've got the second half to do. Hi, Salu. Hi, Valerie. Whoop, whoop. Look at me. Check me out. Are you proud? I've got great neck ache. Proper neck ache. Morning, Katie Woodward. Morning, Don Marsh. Morning, Sharon Harrison Gothard. Well done. You're all up and about. Oh, God. Is anybody doing any exercise this morning? Or is it just me? Morning, Tracy Millhouse, love. Good morning, everyone. Marie Leg. Good morning. Oh, pleasure. Pleasure to see you all. I'm feeling pretty good. I'm feeling all right. Finding it hard. <laughs> but, you know, I'm pushing through. And I'm hoping to try and do this most mornings just to get me motivated. Get me back to my old self and help other people as well. Morning, Diane, love. I'm sat in my chair with a cuppa thinking what to have for breakfast. Well, Polly, grab something really, really good for you, like a big bowl of old bran. It's amazing fibre. It's fantastic. Just you. I'm having a black coffee. Oh, I can't think of no worse. It's peeing down here, so I'm going to go for a walk later. No worries, Katie lass. I love walking in rain, me. I love it, especially after the weather we've had. It's like cools me down. I've just been um, chatting to China. She's all right. Oh God, I woke up at midnight night and I couldn't sleep. And I'm getting all these stupid intrusive thoughts of her sleeping in this hostel in the middle of nowhere. Obviously, I imagined like, you know, worst possible unsecure building in the world, which was surrounded by every single bad person that ever lived. And I'm like, oh, I can't. I, I, my brain were imagining all sorts of people breaking in and all. It's terrible how, how it goes. It's awful. I couldn't shut it off. And I was trying to think positive. And it's really awful when you get intrusive thoughts, you know. But anyway, so she's been messaging me this morning. She were all right. She, she slept all right, but it were a bit hot. <laughs> she's always hot. God, I love black coffee. Oh, I can't think of no worse, Sharon. I'm just getting ready to head for the school run. Nice one, Marie. Have a lovely day, babe. Um, anyway, so she's loved it. They went to see Moulin Rouge and then they went to see this thing, some, what were it called? Some about a court case or something. A show, but it was something like, oh, I can't remember what it's called now. Um, but she went and she was upset she couldn't get merch first day, but she got a tote bag and a programme last night. So she was happy. <sighs> But yeah, she's doing good. They're going to Covent Garden today. They're having the breakfast and then they're going to Covent Garden and then they're coming home. She's been away one day and I just can't wait till she's home and safe. <laughs> Morning, Ellie. It's raining where I am. Morning, Jasmine. Where are you again, babe? I'll be doing the weighted hula hoop again today. Whatever you enjoy with exercise, whatever you enjoy is good to go. No exercise targets an area though. They say that it makes your stomach and your hips and that smaller. It's not really true. You lose weight from anywhere randomly on your body. You, you can't really target fat. Um, obviously you can build muscle around that area. But yeah, just don't be duped into all. But if you enjoy it and it's fun and it burns calories, all that burns calories is good to go enjoy it my 16 year old in paris until sunday it's awful marie but i think i am really neurotic i'm over the top and i have to really like be careful because i don't want to put my feelings onto them so you've got to be careful what you say to them and what you say in front of them and stuff but i literally just worry constantly if they're on trips even if they go like to um you know like alton towers and stuff like that i hate it because i'm like well Oh, it can go wrong. You hear all these horror stories, don't you? Because you only hear about the bad stuff that go, that happens on school trips. You hear about these blooming stuff, and my brain just goes straight there. 
and I hate it. I can't help but worry. It's brilliant that China has gone. I know, I'm so glad she's gone and she's loved it because we've got to like help her be independent. Like she struggles, she won't answer the door at home. Like if we get like a takeaway or a delivery, Amazon or out like that and we're all in, she won't answer the door. There's loads of like little stuff. She won't like just go in shop. If we're all together and say we're, going, we're in a car, wait a minute. <laughs> and we stop outside co-op and we'll say China go eat shop get some bread and milk sure it's right it's bizarre but with a friend she'll do it with them and try and pretend that she's fine it's loads of stuff morning Kelly Ratcliffe I always used to go to London on school trips. I would never allow my kids to go to London. The intrusive, I know, it's awful because London is so big. I know, and so scary and scary people and <laughs> no offence to Londoners, but to me, who's from this little town, do you know what I mean? That no ever happens in. London's like, she might as well go to America. <laughs> oh God. Morning, Kelly. I'm always like, I think I'm really knackered at this end at walk. I've got all the energy at the first part and then you just get knackered part. <laughs> You've just got knackered, Ellie, at the end. My neck is literally killing. I hope it's not IIH because that's how it got really bad in the beginning. It started with my neck. I'm doing this, guys. We're over halfway now. They couldn't care. We're always the worst. They will be loving it. Yeah, kids, kids, she's loving it. She says it's been brilliant. She had so much fun. She's loved it and I'm so pleased. I didn't think that she'd like cope with the coach because she gets travel sick and what it was like six hours on coach. But she said it was really fun. She was just chatting to her friends and they watched this James Bond thing with no sound, no earphones. I'm like, so you watched it on silence? She said, yeah, but it was fun. Everything's fun. <laughs> so she's, she's excited. I'll hear no, I'll, I won't be able to hear the end of it when she gets back for ages. She'll be repeating and telling me how good it was. And I, she'll keep saying that like, I had so much fun, I had so much fun, I had so much fun. She'll keep doing that. Hi, Diane. I think it's massive step for her. It really is. It really is. But she's really good with her friends. She's got like um, a circle of friends and they're all really close and they're just lovely, lovely girls. And they're all really good, like, you know, they don't do none of this. Teenagers, they, they don't, like, she don't wear makeup and all of that shit. They're all, right, like, good kids. I'm always like, don't you want to sneak out? 15, I would be sneaking out. Drinking bloody white lightning in park. She wouldn't bloody dream. I could never see her doing out like that. But anyway, so she really gets on with her friends. And she likes to... She just, she masks all time around friends and stuff. Yeah, so she's, she's quite good with her friends. We went to London on a school trip and the bus broke down and we had to wait all through the night for another one. We didn't get back till four in the morning. It was scary, but we was allowed the day off school that day. Yeah, I bet it was scary, but it's a memory that you've never forgot and I bet it was quite exciting and fun at the same time because at that age, like, sneaking out. I used to sneak out when I was like 15 I used to sneak out in middle of night at like 3 in the morning we'd go to his mates and tied washing line round his blooming wrist and we'd pull it through a window to say we were there they never actually even really got up and sn snuck out <laughs> we just did that to prove that we snuck out and then we'd go back home again it was so weird <laughs> oh, the stuff that you do as a teenager my kids can't do what I was doing as a teenager I know the signs well yeah that's true I used to actually write, when we were like 15, we used to steal blooming alcohol from blooming, we had like this drinks cabinet, we used to steal from there, I, I was so naughty, and we used to sneak out and we used to trim his hair and stick it out of his sleeping bags to, and put pillars in his sleeping bags to make it look like we were asleep. No one ever came downstairs, this is when I had sleepovers and we were all sleeping downstairs, no one ever came downstairs at middle at night anyway to check the sleeping bag, to check the hair situation. I don't know what we were trying to achieve. <laughs> we only used to sneak out for like 15 minutes. <laughs> oh God, the stuff that you used to get up to though. I mean, I were quite good with like 
most jokes are always right moralistic. Like I wouldn't have gone like nicking in shops and stuff like that where my mates would have done. I'd be one saying, don't do that, be good. But I did like a tipple. I needed confidence, you see, even back then. Very true, Elliot, I know, Sharon. I was sleeping in cricket grounds, drinking in parks. I know, me too, sir, me too. Sleeping in tents and all sorts. <laughs> Best days of my life. <laughs> Best days of my life. Right, come on, Ellie, you've got this. I'm so tired now, I'm so tired. It's so long, it just feels like you're just walking forever and ever and ever and ever. Thankfully, my eldest best friend is a girl and she's autistic also. So they're not into all this typical teenage crap. Yeah, well, my, her friends, yeah. So, you know, they're all, they all get along really well, should we say. Oh dear. Six bloody times Facebook has booted me off this live. Honestly, I, just, I keep getting like... I get to a stage where I feel quite excited again, like I feel like, no, I can do this, I can do this, I can turn this around, because I keep, I keep really stressing that I'm losing it all and it's falling apart and what am I going to do for work and stuff like that and I'm, you know, I'm not going to be able to, like, afford my bills, literally, now, like, it's, it's dropped to a limit now. So I'm like, right, I need to build this back up, I need to be positive, I need to come on and I need to, you know, just, just be, be me and but I've got all this pressure. And I'll go through a stage where I get excited and I think, no, I can do this. And then I'll come on and the numbers will be low and stuff. And I'll just think, can't do it. <laughs> and then I'll get deflated again. But I'm all right. I'm in a really good place. I've been coming on now. This is my second morning of the seven o'clock thing that we're trying. And that's going well. Hi, Jade. I keep coming back. Lol, no, it will stop me. Bless you, Christy. I'm so sorry if it's booting you off, guys. It is, it is shit. It's like my subscribers, a lot of people can't still subscribe and everything, so it is hard. But we've got this, we've got this, I'm, I'm positive, I'm happy, I'm feeling well. Health-wise, I'm feeling pretty good, to be honest, to say that I'm off that tablet. And I'm really hoping that when I go to the eye people, if they say, oh yeah, your pressure's not gone back up in your eyes, I can stay off the medication and I'm in remission, which is amazing. Which is what I wanted to happen. Mine's fine, Ellie. Oh, nice one, Sharon. Maybe it's um, your phone. Christy, Kirsty. have you had any word about the job? No, I got an email back saying thank you for your application. And then I noticed I'd done a spelling mistake on it, so I was like kicking myself. Um, but I was looking for other jobs yesterday as well. I'm thinking maybe like a supermarket or something. I probably want to do something that's not too stressful, not a lot of pressure, but I need it to, I need it to pay okay as well. <laughs> or I just sort myself out and just do this and commit and just give it more. I don't know. Mine is just buffing for a couple of seconds, but it's okay. It might be my signal, guys, because I am outside. It's not the best signal. A lot of the times, I don't know if I, when I go on supporters, if it's even worse, I'm not sure. I'm so happy to hear you're feeling well. I'm buzzing, you're doing this. You will do wonders for your mental health. Yes, sir, I'm doing it. I think if I can sort my health out, if I can, you know, get a little bit of the weight off that's been weighing me down, um, feel better within myself, get fitter, I think that'll help the whole thing, you know, creating content and everything. It's going to give me more energy. It's going to make me in a more creative, better place. The happier I am, the more creative I am and the more silly I am and the ideas just flow. When I'm depressed, I find it hard to create anything. And then that's when I don't create enough content. I think Aldi paid the best out of the supermarkets. Yeah, well, I, I'd love a job at Lidl because I've got a Lidl in my town um, because they pay quite well and it's local and I can walk to it and things because I don't drive, that's hard to if I could drive that would be brilliant but I've applied for one in Jewsbury which is next town along um, so we'll just see but that one, applications don't close till 10th of July so they don't, you don't get your interviews till application closes 
when it's for local council. Oh God, guys, we're nearly at the um, third section, which is the gate with the scary dog. <laughs> Keep commenting, guys, because they do, they do stop. We've got this. We have got this. We've got this, everybody. Fingers crossed for cursed it, yeah. Fingers crossed. I'm a bit scared though. I think part of me don't want to get one, you know, deep down. <laughs> part of me is like, I don't want to get interviewed because then I'll have to go to interview. And then I might actually get the job. And then I'm going to have to like, all my life's going to get really complicated and hard with all the homeschooling and stuff. And I really wanted to do all the homeschooling, but obviously I'm not going to be able to. I'm going to have to get family involved. And I'm getting in tutors anyway. There's the dog. See ya. <laughs> Sometimes it backs and makes me jump out of my skin. Oh God. And tutors are gonna be really expensive. So I looked on to see if I could get him a proper um, online homeschooling thing. Cause you can, you can actually get him into like private, private homeschooling. So like his master's English and his science, cause they're the ones I'm bothered about and his GCSE, they'll teach you to GCSE, but it's eight grand a year. And I just haven't got eight grand a year. So, <laughs> so, so back to me teaching him, but I can get him some tutors. I think they're like 20 pound a session or something like that. But that's gonna be quite a lot, isn't it? I've been out of work due to health for three years. It's scary going back into the big five world. It is, it is very scary. But like, I am an entrepreneur at heart. Like, I like to work for myself. I'm very creative. I've got lots of ideas when I'm in that place. It's like, I built that company from nothing. It, it did really well in the year that we did do it. You know what I mean? I did that all myself. Built a website, everything. I can do stuff when I put my mind to it. You know, I'm pretty smart. I am pretty intelligent. I'm just daft and dizzy but I am pretty intelligent when it comes to it. Just finished my night shift, bless you Claire, well done girl. I used to work in Poundland when I was 18, I loved it. Yeah, I'm thinking something like that. Something like that where I could speak to people, you know, have a little bit of a life away from social media. It's not just about like earning a living, it's about changing my life, having a little bit of a healthier routine. You know, where I actually see people and stuff <laughs> and do different things you'll get back where it's when the time's right yeah Kirsty we'll see we'll see <laughs> just keep trying just keep going it is deflating though one minute you feel like yes I've had a really good live that was brilliant everyone seemed to enjoy it you know I felt really positive and then I'll have one where I feel a bit awkward like oh because I'm get I'm I'm thinking about it too much, worrying about it too much, overthinking everything, instead of just being me like I always was. I think this was amazing. This whole career thing was amazing before it became my living. And then when it became my living, it was just so much pressure. But, you know, I had the pressure to keep it going for his family and stuff. And then I think that's when it got harder. Chin up, I've got this. Yeah, I'm so positive, guys. I, I've got it, I'm feeling positive. I just, I wish I could have kept her clean school. I wish she would have gone to school. It would have made my life a lot better, you know, a lot easier, but it just wasn't an option. I didn't have that option. I was scared he was gonna like harm himself or something. He was getting so, so, so bad and so depressed and anxious and worked up every single day. I thought he's not having a childhood. So I had to do it didn't have a choice unfortunately I haven't worked in nearly 15 years when I moved into my new house I'm going to build a big metal shed and sell all my and the boys clothes then sell other things too and hopefully I'll be able to work for myself well there's no reason why not sir if you've got the space you get creative you can do anything honestly you can do anything I don't really have the space at home I don't have no space I don't have the finances to build like an outdoor thing. If I could build an outdoor thing, I could come up with something. I could start sewing my own headbands, you know, myself and doing that every day and selling my own handmade headbands. 
I could make lots of different kinds of headbands. There's so much that I can do, I know I can do it. But I think I just can't cope with that pressure of it all being on me. So maybe getting a part-time job to have a bit of stability and no pressure for a while is just what I need. It might be something I just do for a year or whatever, do you know what I mean? Just to take that off me a little while. Must have been hard, but you're an amazing mum and you're putting first. It is hard, it's still hard. It is hard, I've got a lot of mum guilt that, oh God, you know. We get taught from day one that we should be in school, we should go to school, we should do his exams, we should do the curriculum. You think that that is absolute like law and everything, don't you? And it's not, you don't even have to do the curriculum, you've just got to have an education at their level. But I've still got it instilled in me. I want him to have his GCSEs because I feel like when you're looking for work and if you say, oh, I'm homeschooled, but I ain't got my GCSE maths, it's iffy, isn't it? You've done what's best for Oakley. I have done what's best for him for now, but I'm worried I can't be enough for him. So I've got to come up with a really, really good tutoring plan. You're doing what's, yeah. So, ah, it's walked into a spider's web. <laughs> it's walked into a spider's web. Because he is so clever and I, you know, I don't want to be responsible for not keeping him at the level he is. My son hates school. He's going to be 15 in August. Kirsty, I think, you know, there's, since COVID, the COVID kids have had it really hard. It's been really, really difficult and it's been like, ah! Feel something on my head. I think there were a spider on my head. It's been really difficult. I've forgotten what we're going to say. My eldest, is, my eldest is deregistered at the moment. Mainstream is shocking for him. He's now got a place in an engineering college. How amazing, sir. You see, I'm hoping that Oakley will like, want to go to college, like find something that he really excels in and wants to go to college, but he keeps changing his mind and what he likes and what he wants to be, what he wants to do, but he's only 11. Do you know what I mean? He's still in year seven in school world. So it's not really, you know, it's not that I don't think it's the most important school year, year seven. But we'll see. But he's not in school world. And it's like when I spoke to educational woman on the phone, she's homeschooling. He's not, it's, you don't have to pick up school and do it in your house. She's like, you can literally do all his passions, things that he loves. You know, no one's like, and you think as well, like when you take him out, you're like, oh God, everyone's gonna be scrutinizing me and, what, and you know, watching and asking us what they're doing and stuff like that. And they're not, they're there to help you and guide you and they're really good. You never read the full comment. This is a college they go to from year 10 and do different GCSEs. Yeah, but that's good. I mean, when he's older, I don't mean now. I mean, I hope that he'll go to college when he's older you know he might turn around next year and be like i'm ready to go back into school you don't know do you i can't see your do you mean you can see it growing yeah he, oh, he's so much better he used to cry every day like he'd cry every single day he wasn't doing any schooling work he was, he was sat in a blooming nurture room for the last two years of primary, he wasn't even in the classroom. So he wasn't doing any schooling. So it was a nightmare. And to say he's so clever and he was still up to date, it, like he was still at the level of the other kids for his maths and all of that when he wasn't doing it. So we're looking, oh, them, them things look that we're on about on my video. Them. Yes, I meant can. I thought, bloody hell, his confidence has come on loads. <laughs> yeah, he's doing really well within himself. He still struggles, you know. He's, he still struggles with his um, self-esteem and he, he still gets depressed. He still gets a bit anxious going places and doing certain things. You know, we're talk, we're, I'm talking about maybe 
getting back into cams again and getting him a bit more emotional support again. It is hard, it's tiring. He needs to be pushed all the time as well. He's, he's, he's lazy, but I am. Gets, gets overwhelmed, same as me. He's very much me. <laughs> very much me. Just cleverer. My boy had fell out with all his weird friends, so was going to the autism lead staff at break and lunch. Heart broke for him. That's when I pulled him out, bless him. It is hard. You know, now I've got China struggling. She's got um, a card though. She can, ooh, she can go to this like special room where it's all calm and everything if she needs to, but she struggles to like show the card or tell anyone can I go to, they call it Thrive, she'll, she'll struggle to say, can I go to Thrive? She'll just sit there and she says, I feel sometimes I can't take anything in. And she hates it if like the teachers, if they've got like quite a monotone voice, she needs to be like really stimulated all the time. So if they've got like one tone, she, she can't stand it. She can't take nothing in. So a lot of teachers, she's like, I can't, I can't listen to her. <laughs> they need to have a bit of like energy in the voice and stuff crazy my son's got a card too but hate showing it exactly exactly because they don't want to be different a lot of kids with autism they don't they don't want to seem different to other kids so yes i've got two delightful kids i love them wouldn't change them for the world <laughs> they're so good but a lot of stress and worry constantly and a lot of mum girl I've got so much mum girl I'm like did I do this wrong is it me have I done this have I spoke about this too much is it me constantly the mum girl all the time but I've done my best I love them they love me they've got everything they need that's the main thing my son's got a card too yeah nothing sinks in for my son unless it's an interest yeah yeah when they're really interested in it it's brilliant like she loves drama loves theater so she'll listen to that all day she wouldn't play she got a hit she got a main part in the play she was like another child she put american accent on and everything came out on that stage and did that it, it, it was just unbelievable because she loves theater so much so she just does it and she's really good at acting she's brilliant she had a main part in, pri in a primary school in the end of the Leave us um, play. She was fantastic in that. An American accent as well, like, you'd think she was actually American. I can't believe it. Two beautiful children, and you and Connor are amazing. I wouldn't say amazing, like, it, it's hard being a parent. I have never said I'm the best parent. I could have done things better, I could have done things different. But you know, they've always had love, and they've always had everything they need. But I've been mentally ill since I was 17. So it's never going to be easy. And having postnatal depression with both was really, really hard. So I still, I think I still have the mum guilt. Like, you know, I always think, does that affect them? If you've got postnatal depression, if you're not brilliant, you know, was the bonding okay? You, you you just question everything. But I think it's just in our genes. I think it's in mine and Conrad's genes. Conrad now, like I said the other day, often says he thinks he's on spectrum and I have got ADHD. And who knows, like, you, you don't know when you've got ADHD, you could be on spectrum. There's different, like, levels of things, isn't there? I have a lot of traits. So, my kids... <laughs> They're gonna be like us, aren't they? Probably. Maybe acting is the way forward for China. Yeah, she's she's great at acting. She's thinking about she, she was thinking about going to um or trying to get in Kappa, which is like um an acting school, like a theatre school. It's a really good one. It's like a bus ride away on a morning. 
or a train ride. So she was thinking of trying to get in there, but China being China, I think she's going to stay at sixth form because she knows the school, you know, and that's just comfortable to her. However, she's got she's got um, a work experience in the primary school that she went to, which is amazing. But again, that's why she wanted to go there because she loves the school. She's used to it. So, bless her. We try our best to help being a parent that is autistic, ADHD, and there's mental health problems. Makes everything that little bit harder. Exactly. It does. I think. I think being a parent though is, is hard, it's the hardest job for anyone but you do look about like I look around at my friends and some of them are just like I, I, I just think you're just super mums like you're so organised and structured where I've never had that and that, that's what I have to always try work at now with the homeschooling but it is hard and then you've got twats ringing up fucking social and ringing up educational people and stuff like that when you already worry that you're not doing the best you can or you're not doing a good enough job and you're struggling and this is the part about social media that's really hard like because if people don't like you they take a dislike into you it can be really dangerous it could always be worse I tell myself yeah exactly we're so blessed and lucky aren't we and I'm so so grateful for my beautiful kids Anyway guys, it's been a pleasure. <laughs> I'm coming up to the last stretch now. My arms literally feel like they're going to drop off. Nearly there, nearly home. It's been a bit of a longer one today. I'm feeling it. I need a drink. I love you all. I just wanted to come on and catch up. I want to try and come on a little bit more, you know, here and there. Um, behind the scenes kind of thing for you guys because... I love you all and I appreciate you all and you've helped me carry on more than you know like without you guys I wouldn't have been able to carry on on social media for a living at all um, so I really appreciate you guys and I'm hopefully going to show up a bit more now try and um, come on more and, and not think oh I'm going to be boring I'm just going to come on and be myself because <laughs> that's what you're here for right you're here for the the real, real behind the scenes stuff. Enjoy your cuppa now. Do you know I'm not really a cuppa drinker? I have a cup of tea like twice a month. <laughs> I don't really drink much cups of tea, but I'm gonna get a cold, probably a lemon, lemon and some ice and have that. And Conrad will probably be on his laptop now because he logs on and he's he's having to do like little jobs at home at the moment. He'll go to a building, he'll serve it all. It's very different. He's he's quite stressed with it because it's so different and he has to do so much on the computer that he used to do on paper before. And he used to use Teams and they use a different one where he is and he hates it. Because only because he don't know. This is one of Conrad's things. Once he can, once he he knows what he's doing, he'll be all right. But when he doesn't know what he's doing and he feels out at loop. It really affects him. It's like, I want to quit, I want to stop because I, can't, I need to know what I'm doing kind of thing. Jesus, let me jump. <laughs> Being you is always good enough, love. Thank you, Natalie. I hope so. I hope so. And we can do different stuff, do you know what I mean? But I do think I need to pop on a little bit more. Give you your money's worth. <laughs> Enjoy your day. You too, um, Diane and Barry. Love you all lots. Thank you so much, guys. See you soon.